you may not have noticed, but it's election season. And every two to four years, we go into this place here in America where there's increased hostility, there's increased division, and uh, there is these, these massive questions that loom over us. And one of the questions, I think one of the biggest ones many Christians ask is, should we be involved in this political process? And if so, to what extent? And then how? And then maybe we would ask after all of that, why should we be involved? I, I think probably the better question always begins with the why um, rather than should. But um, one of two extremes happen in Christianity in America today. So you have the, the one side, which is, which is seemingly saying um, we should not be remotely involved. We should have nothing to do with, with politics because we're citizens of a heavenly kingdom. And so, you know what, we'll let this earth do its thing and uh, we'll do our thing. And then there is the other side, which would be what I would call a political Christian. So they, they probably might, so, might say they're a Christian in politics, but in reality, politics comes before Christianity to them, and this comes either way. And uh, you'll see both sides of this extreme this year, and you'll hear really convincing conversations from both sides. But the real question is, is should we be involved, and if so, why? Should we vote? Should we talk? Should we speak up for what we uh, think the Bible is saying? Should we do these things? Should we be a part of the system or the process? And should Christians have anything to do with this system that seems to be designed by man? I think the short answer is yes, but I think it bears, it's worth saying that there's a longer answer. Um, when you read the Bible, when you study the Bible, there is definitely a lot of conversation about kings and rulers and people in power and in systems and in governments. And, and there's a lot of conversations about those. But I think the, the one thing we should think about that we seem to overlook here in America is the parable of the talents. Jesus talks in this, in this metaphor, this, this parable, that uh, he talks about these servants who have these gifts given to them, these talents given to them. Some of them use them and they, they multiply and double and others hide them and they, they bury them in the ground. I, I think you could take that story in a lot of directions, but one of the things that we can all admit is they were, they were given by this master to these servants and these servants had possession of them, and they chose what to do with them. And I think that this is something we should consider. We've been blessed in America to be able to give and make change in our political system. Uh, now, I understand that the Scripture says we are to we are submit to all of our, our authorities and all of that, and I believe that, and that was written by a man... Um, who was directly influenced by Jesus at a time when the world was ruled, the known world was ruled with an iron fist by one man. And Jesus' followers could not make the changes that we can make in a political world. Now, they made a more important change, and we'll get to that, but they couldn't make small political changes. They couldn't do those things. And Jesus was saying to them, hey, you know, submit to your authorities, respect your authorities, pray for your authorities, do all of those things. It's all very important, but it's important to remember that here in America, the authorities are the people. It is we the people in the United States of America. And so we all have an equal right and I think talent or gift. And I also think we all have an equal responsibility to speak up and to say things, and to make changes, we have been given that right. We, we, um, we are, uh, we are a, a constitutional republic. Now, we function, functionally, we're a democracy, but ideologically, we're a constitutional republic. And in, and in a constitutional republic, we, the people, 
have been given a beautiful and wonderful opportunity to say, hey, this is what I think the Bible is saying, and so I'm going to go with this, or hey, this is what I think Scripture says, so I'm going with this, or, um, or hey, this is what I believe, and so I'm going with this. And when we do that, we enact laws and we put people into positions that then serve us. Now, that's in a constitutional republic. In a democracy, which we function as, more or less, uh, we elect people, put them into places, and then those people represent us. And so they, they make laws, but the, they make those laws through the people. And so in both of those systems, you've been given a gift to be able to say, man, I've been studying Scripture and it says this, and so not only am I going to vote, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to the people who are placed around me, listen, I, I think that this should be the case. And this is so important. This is something that we should not neglect. This is a gift from God. You and I are blessed and gifted to live where we live and to have that ability so that we are our own rulers. Uh, that is very rare, and it's becoming even more rare by the day. And so we should, I believe, speak up. We should have conversations with our friends, with our neighbors. We should have um, conversations with those who are elected and delegated to be in place. And so, yes, I believe that we should be involved. But this brings up another question that I think is equally important. How then do we get involved politically? Because I think that what we're seeing is um, we're seeing people apply politics into Christianity rather than applying Christianity into politics. And there is a massive difference between those two. So let me say it to you like this. Um, as a Christian, everything we do should begin biblically. So if we're trying to make personal change, like a uh, change in our own personal life, or if we're trying to make um, a change in our relational life, what we should be doing is we should be going to the Bible, studying the Bible, beginning with the Bible, and then applying the Bible personally or relationally. So it would, it would look like this. Um, if we're going to begin personally, we would say, I think that I deserve to be able to do this. I think that I should go do this, and I think that probably somehow magically God is telling me that I should. And so I'm going to Google what verses agree with me on this idea I have. So I think I should move. And so I'm going to Google, why should I move scripture verses? And I'm going to find five, um, and those are going to agree with me. And then I'm going to, I'm going to um, begin personally and apply biblically. The same is true in relationships. I think I deserve this. Um, you know, should, I be, uh, should I be doing this? Or is it okay for me to do this? Because I want to get married. And so, you know, and I, I, is it okay for this? And is this a sin to do this? And what we do is we begin relationally and we apply biblically. So we take the Bible and apply it to what we already want or are doing in our lives. And the same is true with politics. What I've seen in the last at least 20 years as I've, as I've really studied this and thought through this. And I, again, I remember going uh, when I was very young uh, to watch a presidential candidate speak, and I was fascinated with the process. So I've been studying this since I was very young and just kind of watching it and, and being involved in it at times and helping write some things and doing some things. And I've always been interested in it, and I've seen one major flaw in the way that Christians do politics. And that is we begin politically and then we apply biblically. So what we do and what those who are not even Christians right now are doing is they look to scripture to find evidence for the ideas and beliefs that and systems and uh, parties and people that they already have. So they begin politically 
and then they apply biblically. And so what they'll do is, um, well, I believe this, and now I need to find Scripture to validate what I believe. Well, I think that this party's right, and so I'm, I'm, I think this, so I'm going to find Scripture to agree with it. And this is where we get candidates saying, you don't have to abandon your faith in order to, to do these certain things. Or this is where we get candidates taking Scripture so entirely out of context. This is where we get political movements that are seemingly Bible-based, but in reality, the end goal is political. And this is where you get political Christians. It is where you get these Christians who... Um, they would identify as a Christian, but in reality, there's going to be a name immediately before or immediately after. So they're going to say, I belong to this party uh, or this party, and that's the type of Christian I am. You'll even see uh, added to it, I am, I am a liberal Christian, or I'm a conservative Christian, or I'm a traditional, or I'm a progressive Christian, or I'm a Republican, or a Democrat, uh, and I'm also a Christian. And often in that world, there is this beginning political and applying biblical. We should begin biblical and apply political. And so what we should be doing is saying, God, open my heart, open my eyes to you and to your word and to what it is you have for me. And then I will do my best to apply that in the area of politics because you've given us a gift to be able to raise our voice and disagree. You've given us a gift in order to be able to do things. So we, we want to begin biblical, apply political, and when we have to focus spiritual, we have to focus spiritual. Jesus did talk about politics, but his focus was always spiritual. In other words, Jesus didn't start a new system of government when he came into the world. He applied, uh, he took the Bible he did apply it at times political, but he always focused spiritual. The goal was always spiritual revolution, not political revolution. The goal was always spiritual change. The goal was always spiritual transformation. The goal was always spiritual growth. And I believe this is what we should be doing too. We, we should be beginning biblical. We should be studying the scriptures, asking God to show us what his word says. We, we should not be saying, well, I think this. And so, you know, this is, um, we see this in all areas of life. You can take any verse out of context and absolutely form a new party or a new system or write a new thing and just absolutely destroy what the scriptures are saying. Uh, this happens on both sides. This happens, unfortunately, with pastors. Um, You'll see pastors who have a certain bent, and so they take Scripture and they, they apply it, and they're like, yep, see, I knew it, and they, they'll demonize one, uh, one party or another, and it's just it's this whole thing, and the end goal of that is you're beginning political, applying biblical, but your focusing is on, is on the end goal is on, on uh, practical, not spiritual, right? In Scripture, the, the uh, apostles in Christ, their end goal is always spiritual. So Paul stands before political leaders, but his end goal with them is their spiritual health. Because spiritual health can and does then lead into political health. Because if we can apply spiritually, if, if our goal for our sermons is not to rally someone to a certain person. It is to change the spiritual health of people. It is to help the spiritual health of those we love. Then that is a very good application of the scripture. And it's a very important thing. And it's something that we should be doing, but the goal should be the spirit. It should be um, the health of the person spiritually. So we want to begin biblical. We want to apply political, and then we want to have the, the focus on spiritual. So that brings up another question. Well then, should we 
what should we be thinking about spiritually and politically and biblically? What should we be focusing on? Um, which I think is a, is a very important conversation. If you think in the scriptures and you look at, at the Bible, God throughout, um, throughout scripture has always called people to represent him to the rest of the world. Look back at the very beginning in, in Genesis, the beginning um, chapters, there's families that God calls, Adam and Eve, uh, Noah and Abraham, and he's, he's calling families and he's saying to them, you represent me to the rest of the world. And his focus in the very beginning is very heavy on families. Then we see him shift and he, he stays focused on families, but he adds to that, that his chosen people called to represent him to the rest of the world becomes the nation of Israel. And then we see in the New Testament that he, he shifts again, and he not I, I guess rather than shifts, he expands. So he expands from a family to a nation to a global church, to a church that is without borders, it is without national ties, it is without any of these things, and it's, it can cover the entire earth and represent him to the rest of the world. But we need to remember that and each one of these situations, God did not say, well, I'm, I'm expanding to the children of Israel so the family doesn't matter anymore. The same is true with the children of Israel. He didn't say, well, I'm expanding to uh, the church. You, you are now grafted in. And so, you know what? The children of Israel, they don't matter. He continually focuses on all three and has all three um, on his heart and on his mind and on his, his uh, soul. And all three matter to him, and he takes care of and provides for all of them. So God very much still has the family as his chosen people to represent him. He still has the nation of Israel as his chosen people to represent him. And he still very much has the church as his chosen people to represent him. And this is where I think we as Christians should really look at the political side. What I want to do is I want to begin biblical, I want to apply political, focus spiritual, and I want to see who it is that is giving me the best opportunity to protect and enhance and advance his people. So who it is, which party it is, which side it is, which issue it is, um, that is going to allow me to protect my family, protect other families, protect the children of Israel, and protect the church. And then I'm going to look and say, okay, on this issue, how do I, um, or this, this, uh, this election, who is it, what is it, where is it that's going to enhance families, enhance the children of Israel, and enhance the church? It's no coincidence that all three of those have been under attack by the enemy since he began to call them to represent him. And if you look around today, you are very aware that the family is under attack, like never before. In a world where um, now you're being targeted on gender and targeted on ideologies for family and targeted on um, beliefs and where your family has literally all sides trying to tear them apart. Where is it that I can apply, I can begin biblically, apply politically, focus spiritually um, to protect families? If I can't enhance them, then I'm going to try to protect them. So how do I, who is it, which ideas, which system, which which uh, party is going to protect on this issue at this time. Now, I'm not telling you to go pick a party and stick with it for the rest of your life because one thing we've learned in America is uh, if you look back, uh, the, the one party in the 60s would now be the other party today. 
And even in the 90s, probably what was a liberal is now a conservative. And so parties shift and they change and they adapt. So I'm not telling you go find a party that stands for these three things and never change. But instead, I would say with each issue, with each candidate, with each law, with each situation, I would ask, is this going to enhance families the way that God intends them to be enhanced? Is it going to protect them? Is it going to protect and enhance his other chosen people, the children of Israel? So if there's a party or a candidate or an idea that is blatantly against them, uh, then I'm not going to go for that candidate, that party, or that idea. I'm going to go for the one that protects and enhances them. Um, if there's a ideology and a, and a system and a group of people whose stated goal is to completely have a genocide of the children of Israel, then I'm going to try to find the best party candidate political idea thought that is going to help protect them from genocide and enhance them. Does it mean they're right in every situation? No, but it does mean that they God has called them at, at a, a particular time and place to represent Him to the rest of the world. And so because He did not abandon the family when He called them, we believe that He didn't abandon them when He called us. And so uh, I'm going to look at these issues, people, thoughts, ideas, and say, how can I best enhance them? How can I best enhance the family? How can I best enhance Israel? And thirdly, how can I best enhance the church. And to me, those are the three things that I think we should be beginning uh, scriptural, applying political, and focusing spiritual. How can I help the family, the children of Israel, and the church? How can I take scripture and study it and say, God, what are you saying? Not what do I already believe, not what resonates with me, not what do I think you're saying, none of those things. But God, what are you truly saying? How can I help families? Is there a person I can reach out to and say, man, we, sh we should be doing these for things for families. Is there, uh, is there a person who's running who I think will give me the best chance of enhancing, and if not that, then it's simply protecting uh, families and children of Israel and the church. All three are under horrific attack. And all three of them um, come under attack by people who begin political and apply scriptural. If you think back throughout recent history, if you think back to the um, early 1900s, there was entire movements, Nazi Germany um, is one, communism is another, in which parties thought politically, but they applied biblically. And in both of those two situations, they took Scripture, twisted it, and turned it for their own advantage, and then began to use it and manipulate it to, to apply so that they could then do what they wanted politically. I think of Dietrich Bonhoeffer in, in World, uh, World War II, who was one of the only voices in the church for a while, and then was, was, had begun to have more who were saying, wait, you're... you're you're taking scripture and you're taking it out of context and you're, you're misapplying it and you're play, doing these things to it. I think of, of those in, in communist countries who were told that this was a way of caring for the poor and in scripture we care for the poor and so this is what we do. But the problem was it began politically and they were applying scripture to the politics in order to manipulate. We see this today as well. We see candidates say, uh, a lot of things that are aimed at minimizing the Christian vote, minimizing and lowering the Christian vote because, well, we want to pacify them so that we can begin with our politics and apply Scripture to make a change in the way that we want the political change to go. I believe we should be involved in certain degrees to politics, but we should always begin biblical. Then we should apply political. We should focus spiritual. So my goal is not a new party. My goal is not a certain candidate that I think is going to do something. My goal is Jesus Christ and the spiritual health of myself and my family and those around me and my nation. And it's always focused on the spiritual side. And then I'm going to look and say, okay, well, throughout Scripture, God, uh, He called the family, He called the children of Israel, and He called the church. 
And that's where I'm going to then begin to apply political. Hey, thanks for watching this. Always remember, you matter.